Uh, everyone, so I'm Pascal Gula. I joined uh, Plantix uh, as a data engineer uh, last April. And since uh, we didn't have uh, any uh, uh, data processing uh, pipeline uh, framework in place, and since we are building machine learning uh, solution, uh, I decided to uh, uh, give uh, Apache Bing a, a try since I'm also a Google certified uh, data engineer. And uh, I choose a, a smaller internal application uh, to validate some of the basic requirements uh, that we had to see if uh, we can uh, use Apache MIM uh, more widely uh, inside the company. Uh, so briefly, uh, Plan 6, uh, who are we? We are a company working in the uh, agriculture uh, technology, and uh, we are trying uh, to uh, solve, uh, let's say, or to uh, co contribute to uh, the uh, uh, some, some of the uh, challenges that uh, the agriculture uh, is facing, which is the uh, sustainability of the food chain uh, production. Uh, what is uh, really uh, important to, to know is that two-thirds uh, of the uh, farmers uh, around the world and the food uh, are produced uh, by uh, really small farmers, which have less than uh, two hectares uh, of uh, field. And uh, they are facing a, a lot of issues uh, when they are uh, when we are dealing with uh, uh, pest infestation, nutrient deficiency, and uh, generally uh, diseases. So we are trying to, to tackle this problem and uh, give uh, our users uh, some more uh, flexible uh, means uh, to be able uh, to uh, solve uh, this issue. So we uh, developed a mobile application uh, which is uh, leveraging uh, machine learning to be able to do uh, crop and uh, disease uh, detection, thanks to uh, a smartphone uh, by, uh, that the user uses in the field to take uh, pictures. And uh, we are also providing uh, an extensive uh, disease uh, library to uh, help the farmer find the uh, adequate treatment with a focus on uh, organic uh, solution first and then a chemical uh, solution in the second place. So we uh, introduced this first uh, uh, core feature in the app and then uh, we decided also to build a, a community uh, aspect uh, inside the app so that they, all our users uh, could exchange uh, uh, tips and tricks and uh, their experiences or to find solutions that uh, our app uh, was not able to, uh, uh, to find uh, with our uh, classification uh, capabilities. And uh, the next step would be uh, the introduction of a crop guide so to be able to uh, uh, provide a really step-by-step uh, 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 guide or calendar uh, for uh, our farmers to be able to uh, grow uh, their crops in uh, an optimal way. Some of the uh, features are coming uh, where uh, Apache Beam might be really interesting, like uh, having a, a real-time uh, disease alert, uh, so to be able uh, uh, to give uh, our users the uh, opportunity uh, to uh, maybe uh, preventively uh, use some uh, treatments. Uh, this was the case, for example, uh, last uh, month uh, with the uh, uh, emergence of a uh, fall armyworm, which was a, a worm which was uh, not, uh, let's say, uh, uh, infestating uh, in India, and uh, it was uh, imported, so to say, from, from uh, Africa. And uh, typically, the ecosystem was not uh, prepared to, uh, uh, to face this uh, infestation, so uh, we were one of the first who were able to uh, really uh, alert uh, the uh, local uh, government and population about uh, this uh, one. So uh, the application that I will be uh, uh, talking on uh, mainly have uh, two uh, main sources of data, so the plant uh, images. Our uh, application is covering uh, 55 crops, which are uh, mainly uh, food, uh, food crops and not uh, plants uh, like uh, ornamental plants and uh, we support the detection of uh, some, uh, something like 300 diseases. Uh, we have a range of uh, pictures, which is around uh, six, uh, six and a half uh, million images, and uh, which uh, in those images, we have something like 250K uh, uh, labeled images, which makes uh, our app uh, and our data set one of the most uh, comprehensive uh, data sets since uh, it really involves uh, some, some uh, really specialized uh, knowledge. So we have really uh, a plant uh, team of uh, plant experts which are uh, annotating uh, all those incoming images. And uh, we have something like uh, 15,000 15, uh, images which are uh, uploaded uh, daily, 
with a really uh, recent uh, steep uh, increase. Regarding uh, community, we have something that 600,000 uh, active users, and our users uh, are coming uh, mostly uh, from India, around 80, 85%, and then South America uh, with uh, Brazil uh, leading the way, and Arabic country, which are the third uh, main uh, contributors. So we also uh, analyze uh, our community, and uh, we have currently something like uh, yeah, 6,000 6, uh, posts and comments with a uh, 10,000 posts and comments which are uh, written uh, uh, weekly. Since this feature win was introduced uh, uh, lately, we have uh, less, less data uh, to work with and uh, for the plant images. So the app uh, will be focused on the uh, uh, geodata uh, visualization uh, application. Uh, this was developed uh, as an internal uh, tool for our plant team to be able to uh, uh, understand uh, better uh, where uh, our data uh, came from and to be able to, to see uh, on which uh, crop they should uh, focus on. Um, so this tool consists of uh, a different dashboard or views uh, that uh, were uh, created with uh, an administration uh, view that we will see uh, later on. Uh, where uh, you could uh, already uh, define some kind of uh, pre-filtering uh, that uh, would be uh, uh, used uh, to query uh, our database. And then uh, once uh, we got uh, those data on the client, it provides some uh, interactivity uh, dashboard uh, by using a, a library like uh, CrossFilter and DC on the front end where uh, they were able to uh, really, uh, like you see, uh, being able to uh, dynamically uh, focus on one aspect, so choosing, for example, uh, a state and choosing a, a variety uh, to see uh, exactly uh, what was uh, the distribution. Uh, so we have uh, some side features like uh, uh, GeoJSON to uh, see uh, state or district boundary and the ability to uh, extract uh, data as a CSV. Uh, concerning the administration part and uh, which were aspect which will be uh, interesting uh, to be able to extract some some properties that would be used uh, for uh, for the building uh, of uh, our pipelines uh, is uh, we have typically so two different kinds uh, of views one which will focus on uh, images and one which will focus uh, on the community and uh, once we define uh, which uh, view uh, we would like uh, to uh, to take into account then we'll describe uh, two uh, main uh, points, namely uh, filtered items, uh, which will be uh, the uh, constraint that you uh, will add uh, to be able to uh, query uh, the database to do this uh, pre-filtering, and displayed items, which uh, are the uh, elements that you uh, uh, see uh, on, the, on the dashboard and that the uh, user uh, is able to, uh, to work on uh, with uh, the cross filtering. And uh, another aspect is that this will also be used uh, as a field or parameters uh, to be able to uh, do some uh, data aggregation uh, in a second step uh, where uh, I will describe this, uh, this in more detail uh, afterwards. So when I arrived, uh, the, uh, the application was uh, already existing, so we had a, a legacy uh, architecture, uh, which was uh, rather simple. So uh, on the left side, we have the uh, MongoDB on the right side, uh, we have an ECU instances, which was uh, dealing with both the front end and, uh, and the back end. Uh, we use some uh, JSON uh, serialization to be able to uh, uh, send the data to, uh, to the client without uh, uh, having to add uh, too much load uh, to, our, to our MongoDB. And uh, this uh, serialization uh, was not involving uh, any uh, uh, aggregation, so it was a pure, uh, let's say, uh, dump with just this uh, pre-filtering uh, at the level uh, of the MongoDB, uh, which uh, sadly uh, has some drawbacks. So you can imagine that uh, this architecture was uh, resource inefficient. It was not scalable, but it was not, uh, I mean, uh, a strong uh, focus at the beginning since it was uh, just used uh, internally. And uh, the major uh, pain point was really uh, poor performance. Uh, so the Zeus uh, JSON file could have uh, sizes uh, up to uh, 100 uh, megabytes. So uh, the poor performance uh, were mainly due to uh, sending uh, the data to, uh, to the client. 
and also uh, for cross filter and DC to be able to uh, process uh, those data. And uh, also this library uh, where I had a really uh, degraded uh, performance uh, on the clients when we, we, uh, the user uh, started uh, using uh, its uh, interactive features. So the solution, as you can imagine, uh, was to uh, introduce uh, data aggregation. So uh, on the uh, uh, dis displayed view, uh, the idea was to be able to uh, use uh, the uh, different uh, key that we will define uh, to be able to uh, do some, uh, some aggregation uh, by key. Uh, serialization uh, in database, instead of uh, having a, a local uh, file serialization to uh, use uh, uh, MongoDB uh, to be able to, to save uh, the result of such uh, aggregation, and uh, an external uh, pipeline execution, uh, which could have been uh, Hadoop Spark Cluster or any other uh, uh, framework or an uh, associated uh, uh, runner. So I decided to, uh, to use Beam because of uh, its flexibility and uh, the uh, possibility to execute it uh, on a Google Cloud Platform in a serverless environment. So the new architecture uh, which evolved uh, this way. So instead of uh, uh, really having uh, both, both uh, front-end and, uh, and back-end on uh, those instances, we we'll just uh, have a focus on the front-end. We we'll have the uh, execution of uh, our data pipeline uh, on the data flow uh, on the GCP and to save uh, directly uh, the result on uh, MongoDB. Uh, as a result of uh, our data aggregation, uh, those are some figures. So we are able to, on average, to uh, compress the data at uh, a rate of uh, 25 uh, times uh, with uh, some, uh, some views uh, being able to compress uh, 100 times, which was uh, uh, really uh, successful. So with this architecture, we will also uh, be uh, scalable. So, so if we had to uh, instantiate uh, several uh, instances, uh, it will uh, really uh, support it efficiently. And uh, the serverless uh, pipeline execution capability was also, uh, uh, I mean, a, a major point uh, because uh, we don't want, uh, as it was already mentioned, to, uh, to spend too much time in, uh, in uh, DevOps uh, and uh, really focus on our business logic. So now come the uh, uh, requirements. Uh, for our uh, internal apps, we are mostly uh, using uh, Python. So uh, hopefully uh, Apache Beam uh, provided the Python SDK. For these uh, particular use cases, I would have liked to have the uh, execution of uh, nested pipelines. So uh, first, uh, uh, global pipelines, uh, as you can see, uh, which will uh, uh, be uh, used with uh, the views as a uh, input uh, collection. And then uh, using uh, the uh, parallel uh, do execution to be able to uh, instantiate uh, uh, new new pipelines, which will work really uh, on the uh, filtered uh, view uh, from plants or from those images. We'll, uh, we'll see later, later in, uh, in more details uh, how uh, this would work. Uh, so like I said, we are using uh, MongoDB uh, for the uh, plant database. And uh, we are using PostgreSQL uh, for community database. Uh, so it was important to be able to uh, have uh, IO connectors that uh, support uh, those uh, database. Uh, sadly, uh, the Python SDK uh, did not uh, support it, uh, did not support yet uh, those databases. So I decided to uh, see if uh, I was able to uh, build a, a working uh, prototype uh, uh, quickly. And uh, we see the, the result a bit later. And lastly, uh, I would have liked to, to have a really a, a matrix so to uh, the uh, parent uh, pipeline will then uh, save, save some uh, uh, additional uh, metric in a, in a big query, uh, namely the performance of the aggregation and also the uh, time of execution that we'll use uh, to see uh, how uh, our view aggregation uh, evolve with time. So IO connectors. Uh, the Apache Beam uh, SDK provides some documentation to guide you uh, with the writing of uh, a new uh, IO connectors. Uh, so there are some basic requirements uh, which have to uh, be uh, taken into account before starting uh, the new development of uh, an IO connector. Uh, first and most important aspect, I would say, is the uh, seriability uh, of your code. So since uh, the code of your connector will be uh, distributed 
uh, to uh, different uh, instances of uh, workers. Uh, your code has to be uh, serializable, uh, which might be a pain point or not, we'll see. Uh, second aspect is uh, immutability, so the uh, state of your uh, connector uh, has to be uh, the same uh, during uh, its uh, execution and usage. Third point is uh, thread safety, so we have to assure that any uh, shared uh, data structure has to be accessed uh, in a uh, in proper way. And the uh, fourth point, uh, which was not uh, really a uh, focus uh, for me, was testability. Uh, since I decided to, to build first a, a prototype. So, but uh, if we are to, uh, to uh, uh, contribute uh, this uh, IO connector, so we have to provide really uh, a big set of uh, test cases to be able to uh, verify that uh, the uh, IO connector is working properly or uh, it may lead to uh, bad, bad uh, pipeline execution and some, uh, some bad surprises uh, afterwards. Uh, in terms of uh, implementation, uh, what is nice is that uh, the uh, Python SDK already provided some uh, abstract class uh, to, uh, to, uh, to start uh, working with. So there is uh, two uh, main aspects, the source aspect and the sync aspect. For the source aspect, you have to uh, uh, derive uh, a class uh, which is called a bound source, which help you uh, bundle uh, the, uh, the read uh, of uh, one of your uh, sources, and which is working uh, closely uh, with a range tracker, which is used uh, to uh, be able to uh, uh, dynamically uh, uh, balance uh, the load when you uh, read uh, from a sources. So you just have to uh, uh, write the, uh, the method uh, that those uh, abstract class are, are defining, which is, uh, let's say, straightforward. And uh, for the sync part, also, uh, we also use the two, two part. The sync, uh, which uh, is used to uh, describe uh, the property uh, of, uh, of your sync, and the writer, which will be uh, responsible uh, to write uh, uh, effectively uh, in, uh, in your database or your, your, your file system, uh, depending on the, the type of uh, IO connectors that uh, you would like to write. Some uh, miscellaneous. Uh, Things, things to note is that uh, usually uh, when you're writing a, a source uh, or a sync, it's better to uh, be able to uh, wrap uh, them into a, a pre transform. Uh, and you do this uh, by using the uh, read and write uh, transform uh, uh, helper so that you can really uh, then uh, use uh, those uh, IO connector uh, in an Apache Beam uh, when, you, when you will write uh, your own uh, pipeline. Uh, also, uh, a point to note is that uh, there are some uh, new way of uh, uh, doing things uh, with regard uh, to uh, the uh, source part, which is uh, the new framework called uh, uh, Splitable uh, Do Function, or SDF. So I did not use uh, this framework when I uh, wrote my prototype, but this is something that uh, will have to be uh, taken into account uh, uh, as a second step. So I think that the Java SDK is using uh, SDF already. But for the Python side, uh, which, uh, which is uh, still uh, a little bit late, I would say. Uh, the result, uh, sadly, are not concurrent. So when I did uh, my prototype, uh, I used uh, PyMongo uh, as a client uh, library uh, to, do, uh, to do my uh, prototype. And uh, sadly, PyMongo is uh, not uh, serializable. Uh, so I had no time uh, to. Uh, be able to, uh, to find a solution. Uh, so I know that uh, Beam is using a library called uh, Gold Deal, which is an extension to, uh, to uh, Pickle. Uh, and I'm in contact with, uh, with uh, the author of uh, Deal uh, to be able to, to find a solution for PyMongo. But typically, it creates a, a Python uh, a prod object, which is probably establishing a, 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 a stream to be able to, to write uh, with it, which is something which uh, is not portable. Uh, hopefully, uh, the uh, read part did not pose uh, too much problem for uh, an execution uh, uh, with a direct runner, and uh, I, I had to uh, be forced to have a, a workaround with uh, some uh, file serialization and then uh, some uh, post pipeline uh, processing, uh, uh, taking uh, the easy data that uh, I serialized in the file and doing some bulk write directly uh, into uh, MongoDB. Uh, so I hope that uh, I 
could get some some support from uh, from uh, expert uh, here to be able to uh, to work uh, on that topic and to be able to uh, to uh, contribute uh, these MongoDB connectors because I don't think that we are the uh, only one uh, using uh, MongoDB and to uh, who wants to to use uh, uh, the uh, the Python uh, SDK uh, of Apache Beam uh, in the future? So it would be uh, really uh, interesting to to contribute. And uh, but uh, we are not uh, we won't be able to uh, to do this uh, alone uh, as a company or even me uh, as an individual. Uh, regarding the spec oh, that's the problem of animation. Sorry. So the idea, uh, really, which was, was not a, a strong requirement, but uh, which would uh, uh, be uh, only uh, uh, a personal uh, aspect, would be uh, to use really Apache Beam for the whole uh, 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 development and uh, pipeline execution. So uh, as I said, we start uh, with, with, uh, with view. And uh, depending uh, on, uh, on these views, then we will uh, have two, two different kind of uh, uh, pipelines. One which will be uh, related to images, and the other one which will be uh, related to post. Uh, so the idea was really to be able to create inside a do function a new pipeline. So this is something which is uh, uh, not possible currently uh, with Apache Beam. Uh, but as a workaround, uh, I decided to uh, spawn uh, a new process and to be able to, to call uh, this uh, uh, process uh, new process question inside a pipeline, which uh, lead us to, to uh, exactly uh, the same uh, result. So after the uh, child pipeline execution, so uh, uh, the goal was to uh, really uh, extract some uh, associated metrics and to be able to uh, uh, dump them into uh, into BigQuery. Uh, one thing I uh, just to summarize is the uh, available uh, transformation. Uh, one interesting thing is that you can uh, compose uh, pre-transformation together. So. This whole uh, aggregation uh, transformation was just the uh, uh, series of execution from uh, uh, atomic uh, or core transformation. So in this composite transformation, for example, the first step was to be able to uh, provide some basic filtering, then some cleaning, pre-processing, uh, to map uh, our uh, pre-processed uh, data into some uh, key value pair, then to execute uh, combined pair key function and to do some uh, uh, post-processing and the uh, uh, other uh, core, core transformation are listed there. So I'm, I will uh, be uh, a bit faster now for this, <laughs> since I don't have so much time. Uh, if we look uh, a little bit as, uh, at some code, this is uh, uh, how uh, I decided to uh, wrote my uh, aggregation uh, pipeline, which uh, is uh, exactly uh, the uh, syntax that you can uh, uh, have at a higher level when you uh, start uh, describing your, your own pipelines. For those familiar with, uh, with Python, uh, the pipe uh, operator, uh, which is uh, uh, common when using a common line uh, interface, uh, has been uh, overloaded and offers the same kind of uh, sugaring uh, syntax, which is uh, uh, really uh, uh, nice in comparison to uh, the verbose uh, uh, Java code. So here you can find exactly the same code that I described uh, in, a, in a diagram uh, previously. Uh, one thing is that you can uh, uh, use uh, side inputs when you uh, create, uh, uh, when you are calling uh, filters or parallel uh, execution, which is also something which, which is uh, uh, pretty handy. Uh, regarding, regarding the uh, uh, aggregation itself, uh, so which is done with the uh, uh, combined parquet function, uh, you just derive uh, a function from a, a combined function. Uh, where you have to provide uh, four, four uh, uh, methods, so creating some accumulators. So here, I do, do not only uh, combine uh, one value, but uh, three values, so which are uh, uh, described as a tuple here, which is uh, the number of count, and uh, then uh, I apply uh, averaging on uh, latitude, uh, longitude. So then you just define uh, the added put, when you just uh, add uh, uh, each uh, element uh, wise, uh, then, uh, since this is something which will be uh, uh, computed uh, in a distributed way, you just provide uh, uh, accumulators, and then uh, you extract the output uh, where you just uh, leave uh, uh, the count as it is, and you just uh, average uh, the uh, latitude and longitude with um, the number of, uh, of count which has been uh, uh, used. So last point is uh, uh, metric points. Uh, so Apache Beam provide uh, 
metrics uh, which can be uh, used uh, inside, sorry, inside your code, namely a three types of metrics, uh, counter, uh, distribution, and uh, gauge. So how do you use it? Uh, simply uh, define inside a, a do function, you create a, a new, uh, a new uh, counter, or new gauge, or uh, new distribution, and then in the uh, uh, processor part, you just uh, increment your counter, update uh, your distribution, or uh, set uh, your gauge to uh, any value. And uh, at the runtime, uh, after the uh, execution of your pipeline, you are able to uh, query uh, the metrics. And uh, in our case, uh, save, save the result uh, in, uh, in a big query. So as a conclusion, uh, we will still have uh, to uh, put more effort uh, on the uh, IO connector side, so which we are uh, really, uh, uh, really to do. Uh, but it was an overall success and I was able to really to uh, do uh, all of this uh, in a matter of uh, one week. Uh, not one week straight, but uh, in, uh, in total uh, one week, which is, uh, I mean, uh, quite, quite uh, effective. Uh, and uh, we are ready to apply this, uh, I mean, uh, uh, more globally uh, inside the company to be able to uh, build and refactor our, our business uh, intelligent tooling and uh, most and foremost to uh, be able to uh, apply this uh, in machine learning, and uh, yeah, tomorrow there is a be a presentation on a, a TF transform, and that I'm uh, really uh, lo looking we took tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I'm really uh, looking forward. So I would say, uh, Plantix uh, love Apache Beam, and uh, I thank you for uh, and uh, waiting for some questions. <laughs>